Hi, welcome to Mindful Mutterings, the podcast dedicated to nurturing your well-being and unlocking the power of your mindset. I'm Chris Maragakis, Women's Life and Mindset Coach, and together we'll explore the transformative world of well-being and mindset, helping you to thrive in every aspect of your life. So please like, subscribe and share and join us on this roller coaster journey called life. Thanks for listening. Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, this week I'm talking about the importance of having a work-life balance, um, especially because in this fast-paced world, and it is incredibly fast, um, achieving work-life balance is something that lots of us strive for um, and is a constant source of stress and, I want to say neglect, but it's not really, it's just lack of time and lack of understanding. Um so I'm going to look at exactly what life work balance is, why we need it and the consequence of not having it. So we have the constant pressure to succeed in our careers. And for most of us, we have to work now. That's become a reality of life. We're expected to have fantastic personal relationships and still find time for self-care. So it's no wonder that many of us struggle to get the right balance. In fact, most of us have been signed or taken on too many roles in life, which means that we never have enough time which then causes us to feel guilty because we're not spending the time with the people that we feel that we should, which in turn then causes us to make judgments. That then causes us to compare ourselves to others and worse still, find ourselves lacking. And then this undermines our self-esteem and wham, we're overwhelmed and life is incredibly difficult. So what is a work-life balance? So Essentially, it's the midpoint between the demands of your professional life, which is work in any description, whether you're self-employed, entrepreneur, top level business person, it doesn't matter what it is. It's the balance between the demands of what going to work or having to work is on your life and your personal life. And it, it will give you the time, the energy and the focus to pursue your career goals while also having the time and energy for your own well-being, your personal relationships and the things that make you tick, you know, your passion and your dreams. And getting this balance right is essential for overall happiness and long term success. So why do we need work life balance? Uh, well, firstly, our health An imbalance between work and personal life can cause stress, anxiety and burnout for all the reasons I mentioned above. Um, and the long term impact of stress can be a serious, you know, can be really serious health problems. And that might be mental or physical or worse still responsible for um, death. You know, stress is one of the most damaging, debilitating things that we can experience, especially if it's constant, especially if we're highly stressed for a lot of our life. So prioritizing work life balance is essential for maintaining physical and mental health. Stronger relationships is another reason. Often the first thing to be neglected is our personal relationships um, because we just can't find the time or the energy to see our family and our friends. And then there's also the added strain and guilt if someone is actually reliant on us and often we can feel resentful of the time that they take up. No matter how much we care or love for them, you know, it's, it's that added burden. They're an extra pressure on our already overstretched lives. So a balanced life allows us to be more present and more emotionally available for those who matter to us most. Then it's enhanced productivity. So because we're striking a balance and we're not feeling overwhelmed, obviously it, we can be more productive and efficient um, in our work and also make time to do what we want outside of work because rest and relaxation rejuvenate the body and the mind, which results in better focus and creativity. But also when we're not in a, a position of stress and overwhelm and burnout, we can learn to use our energy to the best um, of its efficiency. We can be focused on what it is we want to achieve or what we want to have in our life. And then we can use our energy effectively there. Um, and that makes a massive difference. Then we have long term success. So a balanced life will set you up for that. Uh, burnout can obviously lead to career stagnation um, and other issues with you know financial problems relationship issues it can cause uh, mental health issues physical health issues and whereas when we're balanced we can stay motivated and engaged in our work while having effective boundaries in place while stopping it from becoming the sole focus of our life and then of course there's problems uh, personal growth 
so we can we'll have time and energy to pursue our hobbies our passions some self-improvement activities and this can lead to resilience and improved confidence and greater life satisfaction which then enables us to be more effective at boundary setting and stops us looking for external validation and then enables us to prioritize what's important in our life and again set boundaries around that so the problems of not having a work-life balance are you know they're quite far-reaching and they can uh, impact us in ways such as burnout which is what i mentioned before when we're constantly pushing ourselves without rest we can become physical and emotionally exhausted Obviously, then that reduces our effectiveness at work, which puts us under more pressure or causes other members of our team to have an issue. Or maybe it makes us short tempered or we're not problem solving effectively. Our communication isn't clear. And you can see how all these um, then impact on our wider life because then we're going home and we're still stressed out and we're not managing our time effectively and we're probably not communicating very well there either which means we might be shouting a little bit because we're not managing things very well and we're feeling overwhelmed and then that impacts on our mental health as well and it just becomes overwhelming we can't see a way out we can't see how we're supposed to survive this and that's what it is it becomes survival not living and that is really not good for us um and then obviously we have the strained relationships because of the way that uh, this is causing us to be. So we're neglecting our relationships, which then often starts conflicts or we feel isolated or we're lonely or people move on without us because we can't spare them the time. Or we suddenly realise that our children are grown up and we don't even know them or that our husband or wife or partners are no longer in our life because we've just not made them a priority. And that also then has massive impact on our self-confidence and our self-esteem. Obviously, then there's the health issues, like we've mentioned. Stress and overwork leads to various health problems, and that includes anxiety, depression and chronic illnesses. So we want to be able to manage that and decrease job satisfaction. If we're finding you know, life so hard, then our job, instead of becoming something where we can feel that we're being useful and fulfilled and we're using our skills wisely, actually become something that we're dreading and we hate the time that we're spending there each day because it's stopping us from doing something else so to move on from this we need to identify where the change is needed so maybe we could start by considering some of the following so firstly we need to look at our physical and mental health you know are we experiencing issues due to stress or overwork then maybe we need to look at our relationships and see if they're suffering or if we're struggling to maintain them or if we're feeling that there's issues around there that we need to resolve. Then we have to identify whether um, we're burned out. I mean, do we constantly feel exhausted, unmotivated or like we're running on empty? Because if so, that's a really good indication that we're already burning out. Um, and our job satisfaction, has, has it diminished? You know, do we are we still engaged in our job? Do we still feel fulfilled? You know, maybe maybe we need to look at doing things differently or looking for a different job or reevaluating what it is that we want from our employment. So then we need to learn how to identify where change is needed, because we've already worked out from doing asking ourselves those questions that change definitely needs to happen. But then where do we start? You know, because we're already a little bit overwhelmed. We really don't have time for anything else. It's all just a bit much. But. We can do it little by little. So the first thing we need to do is, is some kind of self-reflection. We need to take time to reflect on our current situation. And obviously that's where mindfulness comes in. You know, how are we feeling about things? Are we consistently overwhelmed at work? Are we missing important life events? Is our health deteriorating? Um, and how are we feeling about everything? And that's the first step to identifying where we can make the changes. Then we need to assess our priorities and create a list of priorities, both in professional and personal life, because we want balance. We want both halves of our life to be fulfilling and satisfying. And then this can help us to gauge where, again, we can make some adjustments. Feedback from others is really useful. Some, sometimes when we talk to our loved ones or colleagues and we get their perspective on, on our life, because when we're living it, it's very difficult to have any clarity or be able to step back from it. And, and, and because of that, sometimes we're blind to the way that we're behaving or the impact it's having on our lives. And so having someone that we value, have a, you know, maybe have a conversation with us or maybe they see something that we haven't seen, that can be really enlightening. 
and then it's what we're going to do about this so you know some of us would be able to look at this and think okay well i can see clearly my path out of this for others not so much and that's where coaching is so valuable um and it can be coaching can be a really valuable tool in your journey and lots of people always say oh, i don't i don't need a life coach but that's because they don't really know what we do and everybody can benefit from coaching you'll often find that coaches have coaches as well because it helps us to see where we can improve where we can maintain our balance where we can be professional maybe uh, make sure that we're setting effective boundaries around the work we do with our clients we constantly need reinforcing of all of these things because it's very difficult when you're living life to see where you're not giving your full potential so the benefits of coaching can be firstly that you've got personalized guidance so as a coach I can help you or any coach that you choose can help you assess your unique situation because there is no one fits all situation we're all very different we all have very different upbringings different conditioning different experiences and we all want different things from life and that's exactly as it should be and having a, a coach can help you assess your situation and then provide strategies that are tailored to you so that you achieve balance based on your goals and your circumstances and we can help with stress management because we can teach you stress management techniques and coping strategies and time management skills to help you navigate your professional and personal life more effectively. And that will include identifying your unhelpful beliefs and boundary setting. And then improved self-awareness. Coaching can help you identify your values and your priorities and what truly matters to you. Not what you think you should be doing, not what you've told you should be doing, but what really resonates with you. And a lot of us just get lost, you know, we get lost in everybody else's expectation of us or just trying to survive life. And once we work out what our core values are and how we want to be living and we start to move into alignment with that, everything just becomes much easier. We become more authentic. We have more confidence in ourselves. We're less stressed. We're less overwhelmed because we feel like we're in control of our life and living the life that we want to be living. And that obviously then uh, helps us to make more informed choices regarding our work-life balance uh, and what's important to us. And then there's career advancement. So achieving a work-life balance doesn't mean sacrificing your career. In fact, far from it. But coaching can help you to find a way to excel in your job while you're maintaining a personal um, or fulfilling personal life. And it actually means that the energy that you are then using at work is focused on what it is you want to achieve uh, because you have a plan and you have long term strategies for keeping well. And so the energy that you're expending is uh, going in the direction that you want it to go. And so it's being used to its best advantage. And then there's an objective perspective. So as I said before, when we're living our life, it's sometimes very difficult to see where we could do things differently. And coaches provide an unbiased viewpoint. So we can help you see your situation from different angles and we can help you come up with different constructive solutions because we're not you, because we're, we're listening to what you're saying and we're trained to listen and we're trained to pick out what it is that you're saying to us so that we can help you find the way that works best for you. So I guess in conclusion, and obviously these podcasts are very small, they're just to give you bite-sized ideas of how you can start to manage what you're feeling so that you don't end up consumed by it. And like I said before, work-life balance is not a one-size-fits-all concept. It's a highly individualised equilibrium, like you have to think of balancing scales. And that evolves as your circumstances change. It can't stay the same because you're not the same. You're changing every day and the people around you are changing every day, which means that the situations are changing every day. So it has to be a fluid process. And achieving that work-life balance can then lead to improved health and stronger relationships, uh, better productivity, long-term success, all of which gives you more control over your life, allows you to free up time to do the things that you want to do, allows you space to get to know yourself and change the things that are holding you back and not working for you so that you empower those around you. You become more, um, you become more empowered at work. You, you start to recognize the signs that are causing you distress. You start to manage your mindset. You're leading by example because your communication improves, your problem solving skills improve, your decision making skills improve and you're being more authentic and you're living less in need of external validation and more in tune with knowing your skills and your strengths and what you're good at. 
and that has a massive impact on all around you it's a far more harmonious working relationship it's a far more harmonious uh, work or life balance and also your relationships outside of work change because you've learned to listen differently because you've learned to have faith in yourself because you've learned what you need and who you are and how you want to be and you're not trying to squeeze yourself into everybody else's mold of you and that's inspiring for a lot of people and so that goes on to motivate other people to want to be better or change or adapt by the same token you might also find that relationships change and people come and go from your life because some people don't want to see you being better than you were because it, it made them feel good to see you struggling which I mean obviously is a subconscious thing not many people are that calculating but deep down you were fulfilling a need in them which result, um, absolved them from having to do the work themselves but also once that energy starts to change and you do make these changes in your life and life becomes better and less stressed and you're not feeling the guilt and you're not feeling overwhelmed and you are thriving at work and thriving in your relationships then you're giving off a different energy and those people that resonate with that energy will come in and your network of people around you will be more supportive and more empowering which obviously then boosts you to be even more and we have this wonderful empowering cycle of really good energy and really good people around us and that promotes our well-being and our ability to live our life to the full and to get the most out of everything that we do and when we've done all that of course we need to work out how we're going to make the change and that obviously requires us to be mindful to become aware of where we're feeling overstretched and then ev evaluating our mindset around those issues and obviously effective setting uh, boundary setting is going to come into it and probably we'll need to adjust our way of thought and the way that we respond but coaching can provide valuable support in this journey because balance is not an end point you know it's not what we're striving for at the end we need it now and it should be an ongoing an ongoing thing that we strive to have so that we're constantly balancing our what we have to do in our life against what we want to do against what fulfills us so that we feel fulfilled and satisfied and happy and without it we're going to struggle to succeed because no one can can thrive in a situation where they're feeling overwhelmed and overpowered and burned out and so really it's not being selfish finding this work-life balance and making time for what we need it's absolutely essential if you're going to continue to not only function but thrive as the important person to yourself and in so many other people's lives so if you would like some help with this then please reach out you can contact me through the website simplybe.org.uk if this has given you a good idea of where you think you want to move on then obviously um my social media might help you with some of that you might find some other podcasts that point you in the right direction with this and you might be able to start working towards some of these things yourself or it might be that because you're now focusing on them other things come into your life from other where it's not how we gain the information necessarily it's what we do with it and how we move forward with it um, and so yeah if you've got any questions again reach out to me at simplybe.org.uk um, and thank you very much as always for listening I do appreciate it if you can if you, this resonates with you and you think it's something that's been of use to you please subscribe so you don't miss anything and please share it so that those people who need to hear it get to hear it and I hope you will join me for the next one thanks very much take care of you bye <laughs>